that most of us will never forget, of course, the moment that we heard that Diana, Princess of Wales, <coughs> had been killed in a car crash in Paris, along with her partner, Dodi Al-Fayed. The outpouring of grief that followed was testament to the huge impact Diana had on the world and how... Well, she was loved. Joining us now to discuss her legacy 25 years after her passing is her former butler, Paul Burrell, and Diana and Dodie's bodyguard, Lee Sansom. Uh, Lee's come to you first. You've got your book out at the moment, The Bodyguard. You spent some very intimate times with her, you know, where she confided in you in those, in those months when she was with Dodie. And, we, you know, we remember seeing those pictures when she was on the boat out there, you know, trying to get away from everything, really. Yeah. And, and, and you describe in your book that most of the time she would be, you know, uh, you know, invaded by paparazzi, but there was that hour in the morning, sort of between 7 and 10, where you would be able to sit with her and, and sort of get to know her quite personally. Tell us about those moments. Yes. Um, in the morning, the paparazzi were generally sleeping. They, they had a, a bit of a... A routine at night they go in the bars and drink and then so we knew they in the mornings we could chat and I think she came down she must have been an early morning person she'd come down and we just chat about normal stuff mm. and it was so refreshing for her I think as as well as us just chatting to somebody um, you know who's so important in the world and we were used to dealing with a lot of important people uh, and then she had no ego she was just like a normal person that you were talking to. So, yeah, we had, uh, we had some really nice chats. Yeah. But she also said she, she sort, of, sort of expressed her fears to you as well, didn't she, about what might happen to her and sort of, you know, what could be around the corner. You know? Yeah, she yeah. did. And, and she only did that once because when she was with um, the Fired family and the Fired security team, she seemed very relaxed. Uh, she was enjoying herself. So were the princes, of course. But uh, it's when... Versace, her, her friend... Giovanni Versace. Yeah, he... Um, he was murdered, yeah, he was as we shot, know. Yeah. And at that time, everybody thought it was uh, some kind of assassination. That was, the, the, you know, the thought process at the time. And then it, it turned out it was slightly different as, um, than we thought. But, yeah, she was um, saying to me that she was upset, when she was visibly upset. She'd been crying a lot, and I just bumped into her on the... On the, on the yacht, and she asked me uh, really earnestly, you know, are they going to do that to me? And, and I was just a bit shocked at the whole scene at that time, and, uh, and, and we were quite close, so I had to take a step back in case the paparazzi took a shot, mm. of course, and then made the story up about the shot, and just assured her that we were a very professional team and, you know, and we were mm. going to look after her and her mm. boys to the best of our ability, and she would be safe. And then it kind of calmed her down, which was good. And, you know, so yeah. it was very upsetting for me to see somebody like yeah. that. Mm. And it's hard now, isn't it, when, when we think, obviously, about what happens as a consequence. Paul, mm. you know, when you hear those reflections, the time that Lee talks about that he mm. spent with her, you obviously spent many years very close connection with her, with the work that you did side by side. You know, you were called her rock, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Is that... Do, do you recognise, you know, the things that he's saying about how she felt just beforehand, her her fears about, yes, about what might happen? Yes, of course, I do, of course, because we were just talking in the green room about those fears, about two people, about the world stage princess and about the girl behind closed doors. And we're talking about the woman that we knew personally. We're talking about this woman who was fragile, who was frightened at times, who had been marginalised, who had been shunned by many, and she was fighting for her survival. And she was frightened. Um, in, back in the day, of course, we didn't realise what mental health was. And if ever there was a candidate for mental health, but 30 years ago, mm. it would have been Diana, Princess of Wales. And it just mm. seems like she was on, on the the cusp then of, of, you know, moving on to a new phase in her life. That's right. Moving to America. Yes. It, it, well, things were about to, to change. Yes, they were. And I did see the plans for uh, the home in, in Los Angeles. It was a home which was previously owned by um, Julie Andrews and Blake Edwards. And she showed me the plans and she said, this is Harry's room, this is William's room, and this is where you'll live. This is mm -hmm. a little part of the accommodation mm. and we're going to have a different life. Mm. Not leaving the royal family because Diana was always a great supporter of Her Majesty and the institution which is the mm -hmm. royal family and proud that her boys were part of that institution. Mm. Working with she would her. never have left the royal family. Mm. Well, Lee, there was lots of speculation about her relationship with Dodie and whether there were plans 
to get married. I mean, there was talk of Dodi, you know, buying a ring and all sorts. I mean, what did what, what can you shine a light on that? Did you do you know anything about that? What do you think there were plans certainly to move to America probably, but were they, you know, is there a plan to get married, do you think? <coughs> I, I, it's difficult really. It's a difficult question because now we know more about it. But at that time, I can only really comment about that, that those sure. 10 days in Saint Tropez, but because we didn't know any of this then, you know, everything was everything was good. We we're on holiday. She was having a great time. The princes were happy, and my take on her relationship with with Dodi was a summer romance. I was looking at it as it was. Was it going to get? Was it going to turn into something else? I don't know. And and again, at the beginning of a relationship, you just don't know. Mm. And I think we were just happy that. She was happy. We saw Dodie. He was the mm. happiest I've seen him for years, by the way. So everything was good. I mean, who, who knows, Paul, in those mm. situations, really, I suppose, in the end, how things turn out. What, what well, I wonder is, when we look at the, when we look at the situation now mm. with William and Harry, how yeah. do you think, Paul, she would be feeling about the fact that, you know, the 25th anniversary of her yeah. death, they're not spending it together? She'd be devastated by what's happening right now. Uh, this rift which has grown between her two boys. Those two boys, she thought, were joined at the hip for the rest of their lives. And she felt that Harry's job was to support his brother when he became king. That was his role, to be William's wingman, to always be there for him. And I'm sad. I want both boys to be happy. I, I love them both. But it's sad that they're not speaking to each other. And it's sad that they're estranged from their family. Mm. And I don't want to see Harry pushing members, members of his family under the bus for a podcast or for a, a book or for anything, really. I want him to enjoy his family. It's his heritage. It's what he was born into. And his mother was so proud of that heritage. Mm. Mm. And what, what, what do you think in terms of what, what, you know, if Diana was around today and we all wish she was, you know, what would she make of what's going on with the Harry and Meghan scenario and, and the treatment of Meghan in the press, for example? Again, it's, it's you know, it's just my opinion. You know, I, I have children who are rough ages to the prince. I've got six children, I've got four boys, you know, and I, and I, and I just get it. And I, and I think because she was such an amazing lady, and seeing her with her boys was such a delight to see this woman mm. just so mm. devoted mm. to those kids. Mm. Um, and that made me smile. And, and I think, like Paul said, you know, mm. if anybody's children go through this, you know, if you're that kind of parent, it's going to be upsetting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, we've we've got to ask you, because, you know, obviously you'd, you'd spent that time just before her doing security and there was a situation where they were working out who was going to be covering mm. that fateful journey. It, it wasn't you. Straws were drawn, weren't they, to decide yes. who it was going to be. It must be hard, I imagine, you, you then think about, could things have been different if it had been you in that situation? Well, we, it's doors. a sliding doors moment. We talked about this and that event changed my life for forever. You know, and met the woman of my dreams, and you know, it just changed my life in many ways. Yeah. And um, and again, the, the the drawing of the straws was a sliding doors moment for us as well. And 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 I think because you you're, you're, the point is, you're saying that if you'd been in the car, you'd always made sure that everyone put their seatbelts on, did you? Yes, yeah. it's it's something that Mr. Fayed insisted. It's something that I always did, and I always do, whether I'm in Libya dodging bullets and rockets. Everybody has the seatbelt on, mm. and 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 Dodie Fired knew that. And every time he got in the car when I was driving, he would put his seatbelt on because I told him in no uncertain terms, if you don't put the the seatbelt on, the car's not moving, and I'm going to call your father. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So mm. it's just something I always yeah. well, it's do. Strange, that's something I always do. Those moments. What yeah. can you? You know, these are little human moments, aren't they, in our lives that we, mistakes get made. And everybody's life changed. Yeah. Everybody's. Yeah. And so all those people out yeah. there watching, their lives changed too. Yeah. Mm. I know, absolutely. We will we'll never know. But you know, thinking of her 25 years mm. on and yes. uh, how much she's missed. Thanks yes. both very much. Thanks very much. Thank and uh, Lee, good luck with the book, The Bodyguard. Uh, Lee Samson is out now.